why did the health app start a game company? It figured out that the best way to level up was to keep patients playing along. Yeah, so we want to improve this uh, web application. The application is loading for some time. We would like to improve that. We would eventually want to rely primarily on JavaScript as much as possible instead of using a backend. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, it's not great at the moment. We have seen better ones. Yeah, no, we don't want to load images. Hey, can you explain this Python code and also suggest if it's possible or not to just uh, turn it into JavaScript? Keep saying, cannot see the code. Just had an update uh, of uh, Visual Studio code. Looks like something was stuffed up. It's the main problem. VVI is uh, not if it's going to kill us all. Well, it probably will. But also, well, the problem at the moment is that it just stops working once you start uh, relying on it. That's probably more of a concern. Just those tools are not were not properly designed. They're all prototypes, forever prototypes, which is what this website is. But uh, I'm not charging money for it. That's the difference. Uh, but let's stop complaining actually get something to work here yeah, let's pop it into i think that's the a updated file format i actually not needed the mod just pop in the html because the has some description in it I'll pop in the javascript on the question make sure to convert to JS. I was about to say script, but it's redundant, isn't it? Convert to JSON, no. So I want to make convert as much as possible into JavaScript. Currently, yeah, we had this one sitting here for a while at the bottom. It's a synthetic noise generator. There's quite a few problems with it. We're trying to revamp it make it uh, better to just convert it to yeah, what ah no that's fine yeah put a scream the uh, script inside the html code it make the python shorter uh, what did you actually do we have a structure for the project uh, if we can keep all the different types of code uh, separate that will be great so essentially what we're trying to do is turn as much of the processing into JavaScript. So if you can explain the Python code first and then uh, suggest how can it be turned into JavaScript, that will be great. Don't generate any code yet. I actually forget how this was done. Not good. Didn't I just say don't generate? Didn't I just say do not generate any new code yet? We actually have another AI doing the code writing. But then what did it do <laughs> if it's already generated? Are any ways that the tokens might as well use them? That looks okay. Uh, we might want to just do a uh, pre. It's called the run the python code instead of writing it in uh, yes yeah, so instead of doing flask application can we just run it uh, once uh, generate the data uh, maybe hey uh, can you in full paragraph explain what changes to the code were made keep it short come on can you stop using dot points hate the dot points. This is better. Okay, let's read this quickly. Overview. The noise generation and chart creation functionalities have been moved from Python to JavaScript to enable client-side processing. This transition involves several key updates. Firstly, functions for generating different types of noise, uniform, Gaussian, periodic, and inverse F, are now implemented in script.js. This allows for the noise data to be generated directly in the browser. 
Libraries like MathJS are utilized for complex calculations when necessary. Secondly, the creation and updating of charts have been transferred to JavaScript using Plotly.js. This enables the charts to be rendered and updated directly in the browser without relying on server-side processing. The Python code has been adjusted to simplify the server-side processing, focusing primarily on serving the HTML and static files. The AJAX calls now handle form submissions, triggering the JavaScript functions for noise generation and chart updating, thus enhancing responsiveness and reducing server load. Okay, so the Python code is not actually doing anything at the moment, is it? Uh, can you regenerate the whole code? Yeah, that sounds like it. So we don't actually do anything in uh, in uh, Python anymore. We want to keep the original stuff, to, don't we? Uh, yeah, gonna stuff it up, wouldn't we? <laughs> Let's just uh, see how we go. Yeah, later we'll have some example images to it as well. I actually like it a lot because I'll be saving electricity and reducing, we'll be reducing the load on the server, which I'm actually writing myself. Set to copies of file. Yes, I know it's not a proper version control, but uh, it is what it is. So we have just the um, the backend is not uh, doing anything. And JavaScript, right? So that's fine because we we didn't actually have a JavaScript before. So now we do index HTML. Let's actually run it quickly. So we're still running it as a as a Flask application. Just that the backend doesn't uh, do much. That won't work with it. No, just give me a bunch of errors. It's okay because we actually not referencing. Uh, we keep the description. Are we? Should we rewrite it later? Don't like it. Uh, and doing that code because if it stuffs, I can't. I do trust it in general, but not uh, not entirely. We are testing everything. It's a weird error there. So by the way, inverse f noise really looks like baseline EEG. That's the main reason we are doing this. Oh, that there is a key. That there is a key. Okay, the generate thing. Generate. Um, a lot of generate. Okay, what might be the problem? Can we get GitHub Copilot workspace and uh, look at this error message? The Ajax request sounds legit. We actually need to submit the form. Is that the form? Yeah, it's suggesting more error handling. Get that for now. Let's go for. Yeah, we don't have the generate. Obviously, that's the problem. The generate meant to be in the in the Python code. Yeah, I had enough prompting. <laughs> Just uh, yep, several uh, four fours. That's right. No, we don't care about. Do we need to generate in the uh, backend static? Just get rid of the application root because we only have one page. Um, should be it. Still getting a generate error. Just regenerating the whole code again. Oops, I don't know what I did. I made a mistake. Uh, if the files, is it easy? Uh, this one actually should be the index.html and that one is the copy. Right, right, we have the thing working again. Now supposedly it's all JavaScript. Should be much quicker. Should be still working. Uh, yes, except uh, which one's default? Inverse F, okay. 
Okay, so we have in this F selected as default. Can also the charts display data when we are loading the page the first time? Should be fairly obvious, but yeah, we do actually need the CSS. Yeah, we want to do it inside the JavaScript because we already have a script there. We don't need more script, just uh, in the ready function, we need to submit form. Ready function, submit form. Sometimes those things are links, and most of the time they are not. So I already have the submit form there. I already have the submit form there. How to update this code exactly? Yeah, we better spend a bit more time on it now then. So this is actually very interesting. Now when you integrate stuff, you apply in editor. Yeah, it actually does more than before. It was just like copy pasting stuff. And the data doesn't actually appear in the charts when the page loads. I still have to select from drop down before anything appears in the charts. It's just <laughs> fix it. So generating. Um, yes, yeah, so when you do apply to code, where you have function submit code or submit form. Can you explain this code? I'm not sure it's actually it keep giving that uh, without a specific uh, selection i did select it compile it let's find this change something they change something yeah while it's generating a go check the website and uh, let me know what you think there should be a lot of interesting stuff there for you and it's all free but at the moment we're going back and modifying this inverse f function so it works uh, better it should be faster we want to do it in javascript instead of python which is uh, possible such generating the same stuff so it was kind of good to generate it in uh, python first yeah power python will be Ooh. what happened to uniform white uh, look legit what happened to inverse f? Just have it. Uh, okay. <laughs> I just realized. Yeah, it's good that we are testing everything. And because there seems to be another problem. There seems to be an issue with the code. There is no inverse f uh, noise type uh, generation happening at all. Can you check? Oh, it's generating a general stuff now. No, and this if okay, periodic is mentioned, Gaussian mentioned five six times. And the function is there. We need the sampling rate for it. Clearing a variable there, but it's never used. Hey, that's not cool. That's not cool. So it's oh, pink noise just a name. <laughs> it's just a name. Essentially, white noise uh, with certain attributes. Mm, that's a bit ugly. What do we have in the uh, original Python? Yeah, that one looks better. Yeah, I don't think that code works. Uh, did you convert everything into JavaScript, including the one over f uh, noise? that is being uh, inverse f noise function and uh, because it doesn't currently work yes i'm pretty sure if we had anything else as the default that would have uh, generated data on page load uniform white uniform white okay that's yeah we're looking at the could we have the logarithmic scale there? They look pretty much the same, are they? They look, well, they are comparable. So that's fine. How about Gaussian? Gaussian white? Yeah, so this one's way quicker. And um, yeah, that's okay. So what if we 
regenerate periodic um they are a bit hard to test i have to actually confirm they're doing the right thing but the one we are actually after is not there at the moment we're using plotly that's fine we used plotly before as well well that's okay that's a javascript thing so the backend is still the same doesn't have anything index html 62 lines <laughs> why do you remove stuff a javascript 111 109 um still don't have inverse f hey can you explain exactly how inverse f and uh, noise was generated to begin with in python and how is it being generated in javascript make sure you do not generate any new code yes we generated white noise then low pass uh, filtered it now that's creating the filter that's applying the filter normalizing in javascript design the filter JavaScript does not have direct equivalent of SciPy signal Butterworth. Instead, a simplified filter approach is used. This code snippet approximates filtering by applying a recursive filter directly in JavaScript. The coefficients a and b are used in a manner similar to how they would be in Python. Well, it's working for the other types of noise crazy fast as well much faster than uh, python well python is quick by itself but because we have a web application it's uh, transferring data back and forth that's where the bottleneck is so this is much better speed wise okay so python is uh, so we're quite confident it was working in python before but now in javascript we do have uniform white is working okay gaussian white noise is being generated okay periodic is showing something but inverse f is black not showing anything at all how can we fix this yeah the other advantage of uh, using uh, python before was that uh, well yeah you have more control of the on the server can you explain the difference between running this mainly in the server as opposed to relying on the front end only i don't want you to generate any new code yet yeah cost affecting scalability yeah javascript has basic maths which is fine because that's what we want to rely on we don't want to rely on the fancy libraries because sometimes they are a bit of a black box so originally we designed it in python checked it's working and then the bot, the chatbot, was able to translate it for us into JavaScript. But we are still trying to fix one of the noise types. Page show proper filtering. Yeah, we need to verify coefficients. So if it doesn't have math libraries, how does it, how does it do the filtering again? It yeah, so this transformation of uh, several things we're generating white is uh, can you regenerate this function including the updated stuff so taking the coefficients from the original python code is it are the coefficients taken from the original python code okay now it's actually working uh, we have white noise then filtered noise and it looks legit i know this well first of all somehow it was able to fix to fix um, this <laughs> his voice whose voice the bot the bot has a nice voice as well doesn't it We'll try, we'll be trying the, the bot voice in a bit while when I'm losing my, my own. 
the coefficients taken function design by the wall filter filter coefficients the approximate blah 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 so is it or is not <laughs> it's never generated <laughs> like a simple a simple answer please yeah, so this meant to be yeah, it does it does look legit so inverse f noise is uh, the closest you could get for baseline eeg so that's why we are doing this to begin with we need to refine the javascript implementation by ensuring the recursive filter applied to the white noise is more accurate this involves carefully selecting the filter coefficients and applying the filter in a way that better approximates the original Python behavior. Okay, so now every time, yeah, well, yeah, you can compare it. It's much faster um, in uh, JavaScript than what we had in uh, Python. Not that there's anything wrong with Python, it's just, ah, there's a problem. We need a region, <laughs> okay. We need to regenerate button because currently I'm just hitting F5, uh, refreshing the page. The inverse F noise is default. This might be a, one of those cases where button actually does make a lot of sense. Not a lot, but more sense than not having it. Yeah, because normally I don't like them at all. It seemed to work like super fast. It's all JavaScript code, so you can actually you'll be able to have access to it, uh, you know, through uh, the browser and uh, Bob's your uncle. Baseline EEG electroencephalography measures electrical activity in the brain. Baseline EEG refers to the resting state brain activity, typically recorded with the subject in a relaxed state with closed eyes. This activity often shows dominant rhythms, such as alpha waves, 8 to 13 hertz, and beta waves, 13 to 30 hertz, with varying amplitudes. Relationship between inverse F noise and baseline EEG. The power spectrum of baseline EEG often exhibits characteristics similar to inverse F noise. This is because baseline EEG contains significant power in lower frequencies, tapering off at higher frequencies, much like inverse F noise. The similarity in the power spectral densities suggests that brain activity in its resting state shares underlying dynamics with systems exhibiting 1F noise. Key points. 1. Power spectral density. Both inverse F noise and baseline EEG show a higher power in lower frequencies. For EEG, this manifests as dominant alpha and beta rhythms. 2. Self-similarity. The self-similar nature of 1F noise, fractal-like, is reflected in EEG signals, indicating complex underlying processes that may include neural synchronizations and network dynamics. 3. Implications in neuroscience. Understanding the 1F characteristics in EEG can help in identifying abnormal brain activities as deviations from this pattern can indicate neurological disorders. Okay, is there a link between inverse F noise to baseline EEG? Inverse F noise, also known as pink noise, has a power spell density that decreases with frequency, approximately proportional to 1F. This type of noise is pervasive in various physical and biological systems and is characterized by a higher power at lower frequencies. Unlike white noise, which has equal power across all frequencies, inverse F noise has more power at lower frequencies, giving it a smoother appearance. Why did the patient start loving their health education app? Because it always had the right dose of humor to make learning painless.